Welcome back to the channel. Um, I've been sorting out a few of the body panels, trying to finalize the car so I can get her all painted and ready to go on the road. Um, there's not much left. Uh, and yeah, you see that the car is like that um, sideways in the garage. Well, that's what happens when you have dollies. So cool toys let you do cool stuff. But um, in this video, we are going to do another uh, chassis job. And today we will be installing the Paco Strong Arms. These things are so sturdy and they're so like kick butt. Uh, big shout out to Curtis for hooking me up with these. Uh, they were basically new. They were just installed on the car and that car ended up being parted out. So I'm, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Curtis, but uh, I, I got these for a really good deal. Um, they don't even have any of the scarring from the, um, the hardware. So these things are really nice uh, from Paco. Uh, very, very sturdy. These are one of the more better parts that I have for the car. Uh, I already installed the driver. Yeah, the driver's side. So let's go see how it looks like. So here we are. Um, yeah, I'm sorting out the, the fenders. I, I filled them up with some JB Weld. I'm letting them dry. I'm going to let them sit for a few days actually and then just sand them down. And even and out because the holes that I made on them for the turn signal lamps that go there, um, they came all, all kind of retarded and stuff. So it doesn't fit right. So I'm just gonna try again, just shave them down and relocate it somewhere else and try again. But we're gonna be working on this side. Um, excuse the mess, but these are stuff that I don't use like for the ABS and um, the airbag and stuff. So um, they weren't connected when I got the car started. So I could technically snip them out, but I just rather have them tucked outside so I don't have such a big clutter in here. And here we have the driver's side installed. Again, yeah, I had these. I had to kind of work around and and stuff, but it wasn't too hard of an insult. And this thing, look at that. Oh man, just like this bar. Like this chassis is getting stiffer by the moment. I mean, I already have the strut bar. I'm installing the, um, uh, the fender braces. I've already got the door door bars um, installed and those things were solid. I think this is the last thing that we need basically is just the, the roll bar. And then I've got the rear subframe brace back there, but I don't have any more bracing. I think that after the strong arms, we would do the, the roll bar and that's it for bracing. I don't need any more bracing to be honest. Uh, for this car, I mean, it's naturally aspirated. I'll take it to the track all across maybe once in a while, but mostly going to be a street car. I don't need that much bracing, to be honest, but uh, I think that this will help stiffen up the chassis quite a bit, and then having the hard top will just give it a, a little bit more of a touch. Let's check out these arms. So my first impression on these things, um, I have no complaints, really. Uh, I like the finish. It's got like this. It's not really like a wrinkle, but it's got like a, a textured finish. I don't know if you can see like right there. It's It's got like, you know, that same texture that the Miatas have in the bottom, like that come from factory. That like gritty, you know, sandy feeling. I guess it's to prevent it from chipping or whatnot. And I mean, overall, it's just a really good piece. Um... And this thing installs really easily. I mean, if you're doing like wire tucking and whatnot, then you might have to take a few extra steps, but overall, like the install from like one to 10, or one to 10, one to five actually, because really not that hard. I would say um, like a two, two and a half maybe out of five. For difficulty, actually, it's really easy. I, I'm almost tempted to say one, but I'm just saying two in case it's your first time um, installing one of these, or if this is your first chassis mod ever, 
so mm, like a two, two point five, I'd say. But it's a really nice piece. Um, these are very pricey, but again, Curtis hooked it up, so you know it. Um, but let's go ahead and see what we're going to need to install it, and we'll go ahead and get this video finished. All right, everyone. So if you have one of these, they should new or used they should come with all the hardware uh that's included um you could get away with getting um locking nuts and bolts but i highly suggest i think it's like 60 bucks if your kit doesn't if if you got it used and for whatever reason the seller doesn't give you the hardware which they should they're a jerk if they don't um um you could get away with it, but I mean, 60 bucks for the hardware set's not really that bad. So in total, you have about one, two, three, four, um, five, six. So you have six 12 millimeter bolts. Then you'll have like a 16 millimeter bolt uh, with a with a uh, an elevated nut. I don't even actually know what this thing is called, but like once you start threading it in that long piece runs into the chassis and then it'll hold it in place for you so you can just uh tighten it in without having to stick a wrench in it or anything and then you have two 10 millimeters um that go onto the chassis i don't know why which is right here i don't know what those two serve but i guess you know um now they serve a purpose um all of this helps really strengthen um this area it helps strengthen and and reduce all of that that um uh twist that chassis twist or whatever they call it and they help just overall like strengthen this area and they're pretty good for like if you god forbid you get into a collision like uh, this is a very uh prominent crumple area and it'll help kind of protect it but Going back to the kit, yeah, so um, all this hardware should be times two because you got two sides, obviously. Um, and they bring a bunch of washers. The only washers, I, again, I got these used, so I don't have the instructions, but it looks pretty uh, straightforward. I already installed it on, like I showed you on the driver's side. So the only uh, side, I think, because they get a washer outside and then inside the bay are the two 12s that go here and here. I'll show you how to install those. Um, other than that, <coughs> each other bolt gets just one washer. And like I said, it's a real easy install. We'll go over it step by step and then we'll take a look at uh, the, final, the final results and that's it. Let's get installing this. There are a few optional tools that you can or you might actually have to use. In my case, I have to because I'm doing all that wire tucking for like the stuff that I don't have anymore, like the airbag and the ABS and stuff like that. So since I'm kind of tucking it outward, outside of the engine bay, so I kind of have to use like extra stuff, but it doesn't make the job any more complicated. It just helps you tidy things up. The things that I've used all together, um, you will need a drill. And the bit that I that I used, I don't remember what it was. It's a 1132, an 1132. I mean, you can use probably a size bigger, size smaller. I just found that this one fits the the bolt perfectly, like flush with like very little play. <clears throat> so now I know that it's gonna be nice and secure. Um, zip ties are optional if you're doing something like me, like where you have to like zip tie like wires and stuff. You're gonna have to kind of play with the wires and the bracing, but it's not that hard. And you'll also need scissors, so you cut off the ends of the ties. Um, electrical tape, if you snip off anything, you might want to close that up. Um, you will need a 12 millimeter uh, wrench or a socket wrench so that you can go in the inside of the bay for the two holes that we're going to drill. I'll show you now. Um, 
socket wrench, you'll need a 10 millimeter, you'll need a 12, and this is, I wanna get it right this time, this is actually a 15, 15, so we're gonna use a 10, a 12, and a 15 socket. Uh, that big bolt's actually a 15, um, go figure. I thought it would be a 16 or a 17, but it's not, it's an odd number. But anyways, uh, these, the drill and the bit, obviously, the wrench and the sockets, those are required and you'll need a second wrench or socket uh, for the two outer bolts, the ones towards the end of the fender. And then these are optional or they may be required depending on like how extensive your work is. Um, but that's basically it. It's a straightforward install. So let's get working onto it right now. All right, so now that we got all of our stuff set up, let's go ahead and start uh, working on installing this. But let me just say one thing before we continue. Don't try going and installing it very fast. <clears throat> uh, I took my time installing the first one and it was trial and error because I saw that there was some things I had to play around with, some bolts I had to play around with and stuff like that. And then some bolts that I missed undoing. So I, I, I took my time just to kind of um, uh, learn my way around, like how installing it. Like I said, it's super easy. It's like an easy install, but if you try to do this in a hurry, you're it's gonna take longer and you're gonna give yourself a headache because you're gonna s catch yourself having to unscrew a lot of things. So as we start un uh, unbolting and rebolting everything, we're gonna do everything uh, very loosely. And the reason I say that is because you have to kind of adjust it and you have to find that sweet spot and then that center sweet spot, you wanna tighten that spot first, snug, and then you wanna start tightening everything in sequence. It sounds confusing. Some of you might know what I'm talking about. Some of you have already installed this and you know exactly what I'm talking about. But as I install it, I'll go ahead and I'll show you. First thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna remove uh, these two bolts up here and these two bolts down here. Now, this one has a center bolt. Um, mine is a, uh, it's loose. So I don't know what's going on with that. But this one, the moment you take out these two bolts, these are the two 12 millimeters. Once you take these two out, these are gonna fall. The good news is you're gonna have an outline of where this was sitting. So you're gonna have to play with this before tight, you don't wanna just tighten it however, because you might end up having this deviated downward or more inward and stuff. So you wanna make sure that the outlining is, is good. That's why you have to like tighten it, but not like very loosely. And you'll see what I mean as I, I go ahead and install it. So first let's take out these two bolts and these two bolts, and then this is gonna come off afterwards. Okay, now that I've got the four bolts, I just place them there just to keep them to secure and I don't have them just laying around. Uh, you, you're not gonna be able to use these at this point, but I would save them in case you need them for something else. I always save my bolts. <coughs> so this is how it should look like. Like I said, um, this part fell off, but you see how it's uh, outlined with all that corrosion. Yeah, it goes like this. So you have to play with it and make sure that it's not like this or like this or like this. I'm exaggerating, but I'm trying to drive home the point. So that's why you don't want to <clears throat> tighten everything uh, immediately. This was actually supposed to stay still like this, but I don't know why this nut is loose. So mine is dangling. So I guess for this side, I'm going to have to make sure that it stays in place as well. Now we'll grab our 10 millimeter socket and we'll remove these two. And just like that, they're off. I went ahead and placed them on the remaining hole. So at this point, like I mentioned before, you won't be using these bolts because the ones that the kits bring, they're longer and their, their washers are thicker and it's to accommodate the brace. So we got the four 12 millimeters out. We got the two uh, 10 millimeters out. There's nothing here, but we're gonna go there next. And then in the end, we're gonna have to drill two holes, the 1132s that I said, <clears throat> that I mentioned earlier, they're gonna go this way. So you'll have to be careful, but once we get there, I'll explain why you'll have to be careful. 
So next um, thing that we're gonna do is actually install the brace onto here. It's not real hard at all. It's gonna be a, a bit of a challenge. I'm gonna have to go and slip these through one of the holes in the braces, but that's fine. That's what I get for uh, trying to relocate these uh, cables. So uh, let's install the brace. Now for reference, I, I like I mentioned in my other videos I lost my tripod but basically it goes like this all right so this is how it's going to be this is how it's going to look me install uh once I install it those wires are going to be going somewhere around through one of these holes I'll see which one and then we'll go from there I can't record and install this at the same time so just bear with me all right, so I was able to get it installed. It's not completely installed because we're gonna go over everything that we need to do. But um, I have it loosely fitted on just to kind of keep it in place. So you see here, this is where that, you see how I can move it? That's because it's not really fully tight. Now you understand why I put them loosely on. So I just secured it in place with the, one of the 10s here, one of the 12s here, and one of the 12s here. And that way I'm able to kind of adjust it and go tightening it as I go. So what we're gonna do actually is we're gonna go ahead and drill out the areas for the two 12s that go over here. Then we'll go ahead and, and loosely put the other bolts back and adjusting this as we go. And we'll also, uh, we'll leave this one for last, but I'll show you how to install this one first. So here we have our 15 millimeter socket. We have the washer, 15 millimeter bolt. I don't know how long that is. And then we have our inner nut uh, with this, uh, I don't know, this extension that once you start tightening it and it runs into the chassis, it'll stay still. Actually, it's gonna look something like this. So this part is going to go with the nut inward and so the flat part facing you is going to go under here and then back here and that's where you're going to secure that 15 millimeter bolt. And what's going to happen is as you start tightening it, this is going to start spinning until it hits the chassis and then it's not going to move anywhere and you're going to be able to tighten it because it's going to tension itself there and it'll be straightforward. The only ones you're gonna have to kind of do simultaneously with two are the two that we're gonna do here. So let's go ahead and get this uh, uh, loosely fitted. And just like that, it's already installed. I don't know if you can see, no, at this point, that little elongated part, it's running into here. So now I can just tighten this, but I have it snugly fit there. Um, now let's work on these two. So luckily for me, since I have been, I had drilled all of these little holes so I can accommodate um, the, the zip ties for the cables on the inside, like all the harness and stuff, because I was doing a semi-tuck. So just get, get whatever I don't need on the outside and whatever I think is important, just line it up against the chassis so it gives me more space. But now um, I have been blessed to have actually holes where I need to drill. Um, so the one is going to be right here after this big notch, and then the other one's going to be right over here. Um, yeah, and I have a hole for it right there, and I have a hole for it right there. I'm just going to open those up a little bit more with the 1132. So let's go ahead and open those. Side note, the two 12s that are going to go in there, these are the ones that use the two washers because you're going to use a washer outside the chassis and one inside the bay. And I'll show you now. And then they come with these little plastic screw-on uh, caps. Um, let me show you. Actually, you can't see it there, but I'll, I'll show you once I install it, like how to put it on and stuff and... I guess it's to make it look pretty or to keep it in place. I'm not sure what these caps are for. Honestly, I don't think they're necessary, but I'm going to install it since it came with it. Ah! 
And just like that, they are all grilled in. So let's go ahead and install these little bolts. I'll show you what I mean. So let's grab one of the 12 millimeter bolts. Let's put one washer on the outside. Uh, this will start to sink in as you tighten it. It should come out in here. Then you're gonna grab your second washer and your nut and then you're gonna secure that bolt in place. Now, once you have the washer in the back obviously and then the nut in place, you're gonna wanna tighten this. This is the part where I'll use the ratcheting wrench on this side and I'll have the socket on here. However, I have this protrusion right here so I'm going to have to find a way to stick something in there to help me kind of tighten it. Because as you tighten this, the arm starts going into the chassis and then you'll be able to put your second bolt in because it, it sticks outward. That's the point. This kind of fuses together with the fender side. So once you tighten these two bolts, then that's where the cap goes. Uh, right there. That's where the cap goes on the outside. Now, once you've punctured both of your holes and you've installed both of your nuts with a washer outside, a washer inside, and then bolts. Sorry. Installed both of your bolts with a washer outside and inside, and then installed the nuts. This is where these little black caps come in. Honestly, if someone knows what those caps are for, uh, leave it on the comment section below. But as of now, I going to assume that it's an aesthetic thing just to make it look a little bit more presentable so these are the caps that come in let's get them installed they don't require too much torque they're made of plastic all you have to do is screw them on until they stop and you're done with that uh, this one proved to be a challenge but that's what it's supposed to look like in the end I couldn't screw that anymore because of this stupid thing, but I mean, that's where it's gonna stay. That's it. Now, you can put your other 12 up on the top, on the bottom, your other 10, and then secure everything little by little, so one at a time. Um, that's the 15, those are the 10, those four are the 12s. Just do them one by one, snug, 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 until they're all tight. And there you go. That's it installed. Looks pretty nice. And most importantly, this thing is sturdy as hell. This thing is not going anywhere. I like the way how it's sunk into the chassis. So now all of this becomes together as one. Man, I can't get over how freaking, mm, mm, how tough that is. Oh, that's why they're called strong arms. Well, everyone, that's it for tonight's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I There are other videos that are much better, but they have all the equipment or they have second people ha uh, helping them. I'm just here by myself, so I'm doing the best that I can. But I hope that it was uh, pretty clear. I think it was a straightforward install. Um, wasn't very hard at all. But again, thanks for dropping by. Thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for the next video. Uh, uh, follow me on Instagram if you want to see everything that's going on in the background, especially like with all the panels and painting and stuff. And catch you in the next one. Stay safe.